Hello and welcome to Talking Live. I'm Dr. Robbie Ludwig right here in Starshop Studio in Times Square. And today we are interviewing somebody very special. Do you remember Moore Magazine? It's now defunct, but Leslie Jane Seymour was just the editor in chief of, of Moore Magazine and also other magazines. And she reinvented herself. She's gonna tell us what she's doing now and how you can find her. She's created a online and offline, the Covey Club. Yes. Which we're gonna find Platform. out all about. Thank yep. you so much for being here. So you, and you have Leslie Seymour. Les yes. Seymour, more, yes. yes. All yes. I was gonna <laughs> change my name, so you know. That's good, I didn't notice that, that before. Hilarious. Yes. So. But I love more magazine. I know, and so in, did we. I oh know, my and God. I wanted to write for it at I one know, point, but I think I it was kind of on the decline, and yeah. I had friends who, who worked for more and they would say, I, I don't think it's gonna last. I don't you know, think it's gonna the, last. The whole publishing industry, it's just so tragic. I grew up in the publishing industry and I had, I mean, I say publishing was Hollywood for non-actors. Yeah. I had, I mean, a life I can't even tell you. Mm -hmm. Traveling around the world, seeing fashion shows, following Mrs. Obama to Cambodia, being a White House correspondent, you know, for the the event in Cambodia. I mean I just, I, I can't even tell you, just hanging out with the most interesting women in yeah. the world and, and Hollywood people and everything. And then just the whole business has collapsed. And the really sad part about more is that there was no problem with readership. We had 1.5 million readers who what loved was the, the product. product. Because the product it, is. There's nothing like it out there. No, the product yeah. is, is the, the problem is, is that what happened is with the internet, mm -hmm. advertisers no longer have to go to a magazine to get to their consumer. As you know today, any brand can right. go right to the consumer easily by opening a website. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. There was only one bridge, and that's the really sad part, is that magazines were built, you had the makers of magazines, and then you had the consumers, and the only bridge was advertising, and they mm -hmm. relied on that. That well, Look, that worked for like 50, 60 years. Right. That bridge is now what I'm doing with Covey Club, which is CoveyClub.com, is taking that same readership and I'm saying, okay, here are the makers of this fabulous stuff still. Um, I have all the same writers who've come to me and are helping me out and all these wonderful people who are pitching in who love more. It's a lot the same. It is not more magazine. I do not have 34 fabulous, unbelievable editors and a multi-million dollar budget. But it's the same feeling. It's the same mm -hmm. concept. And what we have is we have a blog, which is um, daily. Mm -hmm. We have a digizine, which is a magazine that I publish monthly, very similar to more essays, how-tos, thoughtful pieces. And it's done in a very beautiful, gorgeous environment. It is. It is beautiful. It's upscale. And the idea is, unlike the internet, where things are popping up in front of you and you're getting blocked and things are moving around and you have a paragraph and you can't read the next one because the guy's taking his pants off in the middle of it in an ad. <laughs> This is a beautiful yes. reading environment. You can take it, much like a magazine, go sit on your porch, read on your iPad, read on your computer, spend an hour with us. Some readers have said they spend three hours on the site. And then we have online and offline events. And the online Which is events. Which unusual, I yes. think, for a website. Because yes. there are many people out there who have websites. And we will have a link. So people can find oh, you and, and these can are find the Covey fun, Club, which is great. Fun. Covey, so you know, is a, is a because people say to me, what the heck is Covey? Yeah, Covey's tell a us where small you group of birds. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to do was really talk about birds of a feather that flock together. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that this is small when everything else is going gigantic. I mean, a lot of these women's conferences and places you go today, you're sitting three football fields back from That's the true. teeny little person out there who's yeah. speaking. I want intimate, I want small, I want things done in your home. I want things that are intimate where we can get together. I do these wonderful things called coffee and conversation, which we do, now we're doing them like twice a month. I started out once a month, which is like a panel, but it's over the Zoom network. And so you sign up and the people who are not members of the club can come and they can buy tickets through Eventbrite. They come and we do really interesting topics. It's an hour. It's usually like a Wednesday night and a Friday or a Friday afternoon. So what kind of topics do you discuss? So we just did a fabulous thing on women in power. And it was based on a psychologist like you, mm -hmm. friend of mine who works with executive women. And I asked her, what's the main issue that women are asking about today? And she said, it's all about power and they don't know how to, how to handle power in their 
um, in their business situations, in their home situations? How do they get personal power? And then she said something that I thought was really remarkable. She said, and the worst part about it is they don't know they're giving it away. And I said, I, who knew? Like, I had no idea. Yeah. So, and then she brought um, a friend of hers, Jessica Dawson. Her name was Beth Gallette, mm. who was a, who teaches at West Point and teaches all about power and command and all this stuff. Fabulous woman. And we spent an hour and we had women from around the yeah. world. That's what's great about Zoom. It's a virtual network. You come in and you're like a little head. That's the advantage of digital. I love digital. Yeah. And you can have a conversation just like this. I bring two experts, we mm -hmm. talk, and then we open it up to the floor and the audience gets to ask questions. And some of them are in, they're in Australia, they're in Lithuania, they're all over the world. It's so wonderful. And we can have that same kind of conversation. And really, people were reaching out to you after yes. you left yes. more. And you yes. said that actually that launched a new career for you. Getting oh, yes. Eliminated from that job. It was kind of interesting because yes. digital in some ways killed, killed, killed the magazine. Right, killed the magazine. Yes. And gave birth to a right. whole new role for you. Yes. And you know, the irony too is remember that Moore talked a lot about reinvention. We yes. were kind of the reinvention magazine because as you get to age 40, as you know, you're mm -hmm. going to be in some kind of transition. Right. And women talk, I mean, that if it's a health transition, your family's transitioning, mm -hmm. your work is transitioning, your body is transitioning. Yes. Whether you like it or not, yeah. it is transitioning. Right. I noticed that with my teeth. Oh. We go to the dentist. Oh my like God. Every day. Oh, just don't even know, go to the teeth I know, thing. I know. And so everything is transitioning. And the irony is I spent eight years as the editor in chief talking about reinvention and learning about it. And then, you know, I'm finishing up my master's up at Columbia in oh, sustainability. Is wow, that insanity? Great. Okay, I've got I love it. three more classes. Oh. And um, I thought that's what I would do because it was very clear to me that the publishing business was just on very rocky ground. I mean, people were being fired 400, 500 at a time. And so I started my master's. I thought that's what I would do. And then when the magazine closed, literally so many readers came across my personal oh. social media and said, don't go away, do something else for us. This is terrible, this is horrible. And they literally, I made them take, I'm a big researcher, so I made them take a survey, and you'll love this if you know research. Yeah. They took a 54 question survey wow. to the end, 627 of you the readers. You have to be invested to take that oh. kind of survey, because I know when people ask no me like, three questions, I'm three like, questions. I don't no, have time. No one's gonna do a survey yeah. today. They've yeah. been over surveyed. So I made this fabulous map, and that's where I came up with half content, half events, mm. and that's what they want. And so, you know, as a, I've never been an entrepreneur, I've been a cog in a corporate wheel. So, I mean, the hilarious thing was sitting down at my table every morning and my commute now, instead of putting on my pantyhose and putting on my Spanx and having to, you know, click, click, click my way to the, <laughs> you know, to the train station, this was my commute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, much easier, much easier. Yeah. But, you know, it changed my life completely. What's wonderful is, I, you know, I'd spent my whole entire life on a train. I never really got to know my community, and now I do. And I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you something for all those women out there who are a little bit older and who are being forced to reinvent mm -hmm. because sometimes it's not mm -hmm. by your suggestion. That's right. Being an entrepreneur, you need to prepare a little bit. I did prepare financially. I took, I got to the point where I said, I knew, I knew things were rocky. I said, I'm going to take my severance and put it aside. I, I love, I read that about yeah. you, that you kind of saw the forest through the yeah, tree or the trees through the forest yeah. and you saved money thinking you might need it for a business And I thought one day. maybe it would be a sustainability business. Yeah. I thought, I mean, I, I just knew I'm not the type to go sit on a golf course somewhere. Yes. This is just not me. I mean, I was a little kid in front of a TV set and I had a workbook and I had toys and I had, I mean, you know, and then I would be writing something. I just am not, it's not me. So, so you not knew happen. that things would shift at some point. You yes. had a sense. I did. I okay. did. I had a sense. And so I said, I want to be in a position where I can take my severance pay mm -hmm. and launch a business with that. I don't know what business it was, but then the readers really came to me and created the business. And what I love now is I'm hearing back from some of the readers who took the original survey. I just got an email from someone who said I was on the original survey and wow. I love what you're doing. And so it took two years to create, 
And this has been a long haul. It is hard, let me tell you, sitting it's at your- It's hard to be a one-man band. One-man band doing everything, going back all the way, you know, to like packing and unpacking mugs that you're selling. But what's wonderful is that, you know, you get your hands dirty, you learn how to do stuff. And I will tell you, the most amazing thing has been every single woman that has said to me, and some men, mm -hmm. how can I help you? The entrepreneurial world out there is so generous and so kind That's and really so good thoughtful. And it's true. People mm -hmm. do want to help you. And I'm just, I'm blown away. Completely blown away. Well, I think too, it's just incredibly empowering to look over at you. You know, you have, you had this successful career and that you still do. And, and you talk to women about how not to rely on this kind of no. illusion of security. No, Even if no your job security. seems secure, no. it doesn't really exist. Things no. are always changing. And you really advise women on how can they transition and reinvent themselves. And, and, and you talk about, you know, number one, saving, right? Was that the oh, yeah, first yeah, yeah. one? one, of, one we no, talked no, about me and have, money. Yes. No, and no, no, you must, put aside money. You must have money. And I'll tell you one of the yeah. things that I am doing is I'm doing a podcast. It's called The Covey Cast, and it's on iTunes and on Podbean. And we'll also have a link for that as Great. well? Yes. Okay, so we'll and that is that. where I really dig in with women who have reinvented themselves mm -hmm. and or women who are creating platforms for women to reinvent themselves. And I'm giving you the whole look at it. I just did a, an interview with a VC who reinvented herself mm -hmm. and is now doing a fund for women. And, um, you know, and I do everything from two friends who got back together in their 50s. They've been in grade school together oh, wow. and they're launching a business, um, launching a high end kitchen sponge. Uh huh. You know, like I love that. But what I'm trying to say to everybody and because I think you get to this point in your life and, and this is what I, I really I want to fight against is. Is this all there is? Right. My, you know, my, I've topped out in my job. I'm being pushed out of my job. My kids are leaving. My health is not what it was. Blah, blah, blah. Who's you have want a whole, me? Am I invisible? You have a, invisibility is a invisibility. huge thing. Yeah. Guess what, kids? There is a whole new world out there, but you need to prepare your mindset mm -hmm. and you need to have done a little bit of research. And you also can't stick your head in the sand. And I, I think yeah. this is a lot of people say to me, because I go around the country doing talks about how you must have a reinvention plan mm -hmm. in your back pocket. And I'll have people after my talks go, you know, I've been in the bank, I'm in banking, I've been in this bank for 22 years, they love me, you know, but, and then I read they love a you month they later, don't love you. well, a month later, the bank has been acquired right. and was moved to Dakar, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, it's not about you. Sometimes it's not about you. It's right. about what's going on in the world and That's how right. things are changing. So reinvention, you really have to have something in your back pocket at all times. I, I, I interviewed Kate White. Who okay, I, know you I love, love, yeah. And I interviewed her She's for awesome. my book. And uh -huh. she said, she was very pragmatic. She said, don't plan for perfect. Yeah, Always that's a have good a point. plan B. Yes. And she definitely yes. had a plan B. Oh, my God. B. She had a plan B. Yeah, and oh sometimes, my God. sometimes it's just a person wants a new dream. Oh, they yes. They have a new dream that oh, they yes. never got to experience. And they had a successful career and they want something different. They and want a legacy or they want purpose. Right. Purpose is mm -hmm. a big, huge yes. issue. Um, I find it really funny when I meet, I just went to an event. And I met this wonderful woman from Sri Lanka mm. and she was telling me she was a surgeon and a doctor and she just retired and she wants to find some meaning in her life. <laughs> and I'm like, Okay, oh, now <laughs> you are stumping me because like that's not got meaning. Yeah. And she now now she's working with these women who are um, domestic abuse survivors, mm -hmm. and she's helping them make jewelry and sell that stuff, and she's trying to find other things. But it's not too late to look for those things, and it's not too late. One of the things that I tell people is the other step to do is to if you're unsure about what that idea is, and a lot of women know. I got to reinvent. I need to think about reinvention. I don't know what the idea is. I want to do it. What is the idea? How you get to the idea, if you're really, really stumped, is you gather your little kitchen table group together and your little personal board of directors. Go pull from, if you can, if you have friends from like junior high, high school, college, your first few jobs, bring them all to your home, buy them pizza, fill them with wine. And literally get a whiteboard piece mm -hmm. of paper 
and say, what do you remember about my interests? Because what you're looking for, you're kind of digging for truffles in a way. You're looking for what were those threads of things that you used to do or used to love that they remembered that might spark something that you still are interested in? Because if you can't find it, a lot of times other people, I mean, I laugh hysterically. There's a friend of mine from college who, when I first got launched into this fashion and beauty area, she said to me, oh, I remember you in college. You always had the latest perfume. You introduced me to Halston perfume and I didn't even know what it was. I was like, I did? <laughs> they remember things about yes. you that you don't remember. And, and also it's a good I place find, to start. And I don't know if you found this as well, but women, once they hit midlife, they really are more confident in themselves oh, because it's like you get used to who you are. Right. Um, the question I have though, is it's one thing to find what you like right? and something you think you might be good at, right. but how does one monetize that? And, and not only that, create a new brand because right. you can create a new brand, but are you going to make any money? Right. Well, That's a there's totally no different guarantee. Ballgame, right? There's no guarantee. Yeah. And it's riskier. That's why you have to put some money away. Right. It's not a guarantee. Um, but I'll tell you, and there's a, um, there's a couple of things along that line. First of all, we have a great piece on the Covey Club site all about how to, um, the number one secret to defining your personal brand. And I just want to say, to too, start. what I love about the Covey Club is that you respect women's time. Oh, yeah. So it will say under the how article <laughs> how much time it will take to read the article and, and, and that's wonderful. I've not seen that anywhere. Well, it's so frustrating when you, you know, you're standing in line at the bank or you're right. standing in line at the train and, and you're halfway through and you can't finish. So right. I'd yes. rather that you skip that piece, hold it for later or whatever like that. Um, but we teach you about rebranding and then I'm trying to remember the other part that we were talking about. Um, the reinvention? Or, yeah. Well, um, it was, there's a lot about rebranding that you can do. And the financial oh, the piece, financial how to, how to yes. make money from And we it. talk, yes. And we talk a lot about that. I'm digging in more and more into the, how do you make money out of that? Mm -hmm. One of the challenges that I'm doing is, unlike a lot of people who come from my business who are opening up free Facebook pages, free websites, free whatever... I am actually trying to make this into a sustainable business because if so it's not... So explain the difference yes. because your business is very, very different, different in that way. It's not click very and different. bait and it's That's not right. just no. a lot of just meaningless articles or because, articles that seem outdated. Well, but the meaningless clickbait, the reason why that exists is because if you're going to go back into the advertiser model, mm -hmm. which is where you're going to say, I'm giving you everything for free reader but it's all going to be supported by ads. And that's why you have a paragraph and then you have a, a person undressing themselves from an advertiser and then a paragraph and you can't read is because it's the advertiser is paying for all that's this. Right. So I would rather go to a woman today and especially in our group and say, all that exists out there. You want to read clickbait. You want to read stuff that doesn't, it's just fluff. It doesn't, it's a great headline. Mm -hmm. doesn't deliver any information. It's all out there. It's free. If you really understand that there is something better you want something better. You want a better environment for reading. You don't want to be disturbed. You want thoughtful pieces. You want privacy. You want privacy. A little bit. That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking you to pay something for it. The wing it part is the entry part. It's free. You can come in. I really hate it when people throw down a, you know, they want you to sign up and you haven't even seen what it is. Yeah. I say, give me your, just give me your email mm -hmm. and then come in and have a look around. You can read one of the digizines. You can watch one of the coffee and conversations that we've recorded. And it's really valuable. The free component. I signed up for it. It's really um, it's helpful. It's really valuable and helpful. And, and it does make you want to try it a bit more. A lot of people are stepping up. Yes. And um, what's really interesting too, is you can even join in the coffee and conversations mm. and things like that. Um, by buying a ticket. We sell them for $3.99 on, mm -hmm. on Eventbrite. And a lot of the wing it people who are in the free area come in just a la carte. Right. There's a lot of people they don't want to be committed. They don't want to join. I totally get it. And you also vet your experts. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. we were talking about you were looking for a psychologist who yes. specializes in, in money. money. I and want I somebody. Said, I said, well, I'm a therapist. I could talk about money, but I'm still no, working no, out I my own interest. Really, yeah, yeah, no, like, no, no, no. <laughs> they have to specialize in money. And I like that. Well, because... I have a mission and I yeah. have a mission to arm women with the information that they want. And like what you said that you saw on the side is we don't want to waste your time. Right. And not that you're a waste of time. You right. would not be. You'll have but me on for something I'll have else you on that for I something can else. To, right. right. That you, yes. that you are an expert yes. in. I'd rather go there and yeah. then pull the people who are 
um, who can really help us get over these topics. Like, okay. I mean, and, and, one, and the topic that we want to do is a um, coffee and conversation about, and I call it, you know, how to ask for money without feeling slimy, because mm. you need to ask for money in order to create a reinvention, or you need to ask for money, you know, if you're going to be raising money. And a lot of women, you shockingly, have you have to get have trouble. Yeah, yeah and I'm just not good at this. I'm not good at this. I'm shocked. I was telling you, I went to to meet with a bunch of investors who invest in women's sites, and then yeah. just in the coffee area, we're talking about. And I was admitting that I'm, you know, I'm I'm great at asking for money for you and your thing. Mm -hmm. I suck at asking for money for I've me. I've had to learn. And this, in, these investors sat there and said, yeah. "I have trouble asking for myself too." Oh, yeah. We have trouble. So right. we got to solve this problem because the new feminism is money. I think you have to think about the purpose. Yes. And that it's just not money for you, but it's money so that you can um, create your purpose and really send your message out to the world, which you can't do without money. Right. I mean, it requires money. It's an opportunity. What it's I've an learned, opportunity. It's an yes. opportunity for those people to join you yes. on this fabulous journey yes. that they would never have access to. I'm getting better. Yes, I know. It takes practice, I think. Oh, practice God. makes perfect. Hard. And, and just the other thing that you say is you think um, in terms of reinventing yourself to think about what interests you which yes. I think is fantastic. One of the things that we do is we do a quick five where we get in-depth information about you. So will you play along? Sure, okay. absolutely. Okay. What are some red flags to watch out for in daily life? In daily life as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur or you or mean just in just... general? Yes, as an entrepreneur in general. I mean, you know, I don't know. I think being bored. Being bored. I think there'd be nothing more horrible than yeah. being bored. And I do hear of women who say that, you know, when they lose the big time job or they're, you know, they're feeling that it's not going to work out, you know, being bored is just not for them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, being bored is a good sign that you're not on mission. Yeah. And I think you, you shouldn't be bored in this day and age. I think it's a waste yeah. of a human being to be bored. Like mm -hmm. get out there and give something back. Or let and, it spark your creativity. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it, I mean, and really, Honest to God, it sounds so cheesy and stupid, but if you are feeling like, I don't know what my value is, I don't know what I should do next, go find, well, honestly, it just sounds so stupid, but just go find a way to give back to somebody. Mm -hmm. I agree. It is just amazing. They even did those studies, which we all cite, of course, mm -hmm. which was they took the kids who are generally poor and are usually be, being given stuff. Mm -hmm. And when they gave them the ability to give back to other people, the empowerment level. Yes. I actually get goosebumps. It's nice when I think to realize you. Everybody has something to give. Everyone has something and to, to give, give back. What's something people don't worry about but really should? Money. Money. Being, yeah, no. you know, yeah. and I think you know I, I am totally that, guilty. But, no, I'm totally guilty of that too. And yeah. I think I have really come very clearly to see that money and in, right. and investment in women. Just like what you're seeing in politics now, how you're seeing women say, look, okay, we're, we're tired of this. If we're tired of this, just shut up and do something about mm -hmm. it. So you see like thousands of women who never ran running for office right. across the board. I think it's the same thing with money. I think we have to realize that if you want power, money is power. Money, money is power. Money is power. Money yep. is politics. Politics is power. And if we want to shape the world, in a way that is better for women, those two things have to get done. And especially if you're at midlife, get off your bun yeah. and get some power out Did there. Did you say that money influences culture? Yeah, well, yes, it does. Yes, you said that. It does. It I, does. I knew I read it, it somewhere. Yes, I knew I thought does. it was with you. What's some insider knowledge that only people in your line of work have? Insider knowledge. Um, <laughs> I'm going to tell, well, celebrities are not very nice. Oh, wow. Are not very nice. You can pick a handful. Mm. I could pick a handful after 35 years of doing this business. Interesting. A handful. Believe me. Yeah. Everything you see out there, yeah. it's not real. It's not, not real. real. They're handled. They're handled. It's Why do you 99% think they're not nice? Do you think space. they're entitled? Oh, or? yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. They're so entitled. Mm. Oh, not nice people. Mm. I mean, a few exceptions. Yeah. I will say I've been blown away by a few people, but 99%. Mm. And I had a, I mean, honestly, if I could have sold magazines without a celebrity on the cover, I would have done it. Mm. I could see why. Yeah. If they're not nice, why do you want to give them anything? Not nice. What did you Google last? 
Oh God, I don't know. <laughs> I Google everything. <laughs> what have I been looking for? I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to remember. I don't know. I have to, I have to book a flight to California shortly. So probably. So maybe that. that'll be your next Google be. search. What always cheers you up when you think about it? I'm a cheesy, cheesy kids person. My kids were, you mm-hmm. know, I have a 27 year old and a 22 year old and they're just, you know, they're just amazing kids. And I, and, and that's one of the graces of getting to this age yeah. when you, you know, there's so much worrying that we do when they're little, I have mm-hmm. to say, and I loved, I love babies. I love them little, but you worry like every step of yeah. the way, you just, you're just worrying 25 feet in front of them or two hours in front of them or an hour a day or a year. And when they're finally adults, you're, you still worry about them, but you feel, you know, that they have a good soul. They have a yeah. good heart, that they're smart. They know how to navigate the world. Look, they're not going to be perfect, but you feel like you've given them, you know, you put them out in a boat and the boat is pretty solid. Out they have there. good skills and good skills yeah. to navigate the world. And, it's and nice you can to like breathe. Your kids. Oh yeah. And they're just, and it's nice to see them as adults. Yes. And to see to see them come back at you. Mm-hmm. Here's the funny part. So you'll love this. Um, you know, I've been li- we live out in the suburbs. So I come in. This is like about two years ago. My my son is living in the city for the first time, and he's putting me in a cab. It's late at night, and he goes, "Now are you okay? Do you want me to? Oh, do you want me to wait? I'm like, sweet. I'm like, I you know, like I've lived man. in the city. I've worked in the city. It's <laughs> fine." so funny that he was worried about it's me. interesting to see boys be very protective of their mothers once they get to a certain point it's really no nice. and then my daughter did oh, the your daughter thing. did the same thing so we were oh. talking about i wanted this other haircut and she and i were getting we look a lot alike so we were getting this same haircut uh-huh. with the, the looser thing and so she had a great picture and i said oh send me the picture and i'll use that too and she says to me she says, now just make sure you tell them that you don't want that color oh and God. i was like they're okay. so nurturing. Yeah, I love that's that. funny. I mean, and I was like, is that hysterical? Aww. I'm like, and it's wonderful. I mean, it I'm is. thrilled, but it's really very funny. It's so nice. So, I'm wondering if you can help us out. Absolutely. Last show, we had a board certified plastic surgeon. He's offering $2,000 worth of services. Oh my goodness. And so we, we told people who like and share the show that they were eligible. Oh, that's Will so you sweet. pick our yes, next winner? Absolutely. All right, here you go. So like, and share the show. I got to figure out how to do this. Yeah. So, yeah. So let's okay. see who. Stacy Schneider. Oh my goodness. Great. All right. So- All right. Stacey, Stacey, don't tell anybody. You are the winner. Oh my gosh, she's going to be very excited. That's really so cool. We will How let Dr. Cool. K know. And I also have that's really cool. Um, a book for you. Oh, your that's best great. ages now, awesome. which is right awesome. up your alley. Yes, yes, thank yes. So we'll get you for... to do something on that for the blog. Yeah, yeah. And thank Fantastic. you so much for joining us and Happy for offering here. women just information on how to reinvent themselves, how to brand themselves, how to empower themselves. And, and come, come such to a the great comedy club. I'm going to come. Come to the comedy club. Club. And there's a podcast. So we are going to have a link up for everything. Great. So you can find where Leslie is. And it's going to be fabulous. And Thanks spread for the joining. word. Spread the word. <laughs> Share and like. And we'll be.